Welcome to the course of Architectural Studies for Engineers. This course is of three grade hours. Only theory course and there is no practical. It is offered in fall semester 2020. This is lecture number one. The course code is AR310. My name is Ravinder Kumar Khyani. I am your teacher. I am assistant professor at Department of Architecture and Planning, NAD University of Engineering and Technology, Karachi, Sindh, Pakistan. First of all, let's understand what are the course contents that we have to learn in this course. There are three themes in this course. One is general, where we learn about the concepts and terminologies used in architectural studies for engineers. Then we focus on fundamentals of aesthetics and relevance of aesthetics to engineering. Theme two will be architectural design in which we have to understand what is architectural design, what are architectural design principles, and what are architectural design applications. The next theme is architectural design and building systems and third theme in this course is innovation in architectural detailing the last theme of this course is linkage with construction engineering in which we have to understand the issue of architectural restoration and conservation of buildings and its impacts on construction practices in this course we also look at the case studies to establish the linkage of architectural principles with construction engineering. So let's begin with concepts and terminologies. The first thing that we have to understand is what is architecture. Architecture is both the process and the product of planning, designing, constructing, building, or other structures. Architectural works in the material form of building are often perceived as cultural symbols and as work of art. We can understand different societies by their architectural work. Historical civilizations are often identified with their surviving architectural achievements. There are various definitions of architecture. For instance, Architecture is the art and science of designing buildings and some non-building structures. Architecture is the style of design and method of construction of buildings and other physical structures. Architecture is a unifying or coherent form or a structure and knowledge of art, science, technology and humanity. Architecture is a design activity of an architect. From macro level design such as urban design, landscape architectural design, to the micro level design such as construction details and furniture design. Architecture is the practice of an architect, where architecture means offering or rendering professional services of design and construction of buildings or built environments to the client. Continuing with concepts and terminologies, let's discuss what is architectural theory. Architectural theory is the act of thinking, discussing, and writing about architecture. Architectural theory is taught in all architectural schools and colleges and universities and is practiced by the world's leading architects. Now let's see the first architectural theory of Vitruvius. The earliest surviving written work or book on the subject of architecture is De Architectura by the Roman architect Vitruvius. He had written this book in early first century AD. According to Vitruvius, a good building should satisfy three principles, that is Parmitas, utilitas and manustas or durability, utility 
and beauty. By durability, Vitruvius means a building should stand up robustly and remain in good condition for longer period of time. Whereas utility means a building should be suitable for the purposes for which it is used. From beauty means a building should be aesthetically pleasing to the human senses. So if a building have all these three qualities, that building will be said as architecture or any structure which have this durability, utility and beauty, we can say it is an architecture. So that's the difference between a building and architecture. Now, we have to understand what is prehistoric ancient architecture. The architecture of early human settlements such as Indus Valley Civilization of Mundadaro, Egyptian Civilization, the Mesopotamian Civilization, all known as prehistoric and ancient architecture. So whatever buildings these civilizations have developed is known as ancient architecture or prehistoric architecture. This is the image of Kufa Mound, Mundadaro. This is Mundadaro's architecture. This is Pyramid of Giza, known as Egyptian architecture. And this is Zigrat of Mesopotamia architecture. So all these three civilizations, even the Chinese civilizations, architecture is also known as prehistoric or ancient architecture. Classical architecture. The term classical architecture is attributed to the Greeks and the Roman civilization. And it is because the Greeks and Romans have developed classical designs. They have developed the different elements of buildings and given them different name and they have developed their shape geometry. For example, you can see the Greek architectures. Example here. This is Roman architecture's example. These are the columns, or you can say classical architectural orders that the Romans and Greeks have developed. The Greeks have developed the Doric order, the Ionic order, and Corinthian order. Whereas the Romans have developed the Tuscan order and composite order. Asian architecture. The architecture of different parts of Asia develop along with different lines with different characteristics from the Europe such as Buddhist, Hindu and Sikh architecture is known as Asian architecture. This is the stupa of Buddhist architecture. This is Hindu architecture where you find different materials used, different colorful scheme and they have different kinds of patterns and the buildings are of a great height. Very skillful architecture, you can say. This is the example of Sikh architecture. This is the Golden Temple at Amritsar. And you find various kinds of buildings that the Sikh have developed. So all this architecture of Buddhist, Hindus and Sikhs is known as Asian architecture. Then comes Islamic architecture. What is Islamic architecture? Islamic architecture is the 7th century architecture developed by combining the architectural forms of ancient Middle East, present time, and features of Islamic identity and social needs of a Muslim society. This is known as Islamic architecture. It means whatever buildings have developed in Muslim society during 7th century in Middle East, Middle East and Byzantine is known as Islamic architecture. The examples of Islamic architecture are Dome of Rock, Jerusalem, 
अलहम्रा ग्रेनाडा स्पेन स्टारी मोस्ट ब्रिज मोफ्तार बोस्निया हर्जगवीना ताजमहल आगरा शाह मॉस्क इस्फान ईरान एंड द बादशाही मॉस्क ऑफ छट्टा स्पेन मिडिवियल आर्किटेक्चर आर्किटेक्चर दैट वाज कॉमन इन द मिडिल एजेस दैट इज फ्रॉम 11th सेंचुरी टू 14th सेंचुरी एंड ऑफ अर्ली क्रिश्चियन स्टाइल प्री रोमनिस्ट स्टाइल रशियन स्टाइल churches romanesque style and gothic style all these are known as medieval architecture this is the example of early christian style of church sophia in bulgaria you can find that building have a huge height and there is arcade or arches are used in the walls this is pre romanesque palace in spain where you again find the arches and the columns and the decoration on the facade of the building facade is the elevation or the face of the building this is russian style church where you find different domes these domes are known as onion domes and onion domes is the speciality of russian style churches then there is a romanesque architecture in germany there is a church romanesque in poland the romanesque castle in poland here you find that there are different building elements which are used such as gable roof arches columns and different kinds of colors natural colors which are used this is gothic architecture for example notre dame in paris france and the gothic pointed architecture you can find that gothic have tried to have a height in the building to achieve the higher heights they have invented a flying buttress that you can find in the arcade uh, in the right side of this slide here is the flying buttress or here you can say in order to achieve the height of the vernacular architecture the architecture developed with the process of trial and error with progressively less trial and more replication of buildings in different societies with the traditional rational construction is known as vernacular architecture for example this is the example of norway where the buildings are made with wood local material available and they have used the gable roof because of the climate cold climate and you can see another example this is vernacular architecture in lesotho south africa where people make the reed hut with stone and reed material and the wooden doors thus vernacular architecture is the architecture characterized by the use of local materials and knowledge usually without supervision of professional architect vernacular architecture is that kind of architecture which is developed by people on their own with their collective historical wisdom renaissance architecture renaissance means a revival in architecture renaissance architecture is the european architecture of the period between early 14th century to early 16th centuries in different regions of the world demonstrating a conscious revival and development of certain elements of ancient greek and roman thought and material culture so whatever roman and greeks have developed the classical architecture is revived in 14th and 16th century in different regions of the world and that is known as renaissance architecture for example st peter's basilica rome is an example of 
Renaissance architecture. Santa Maria Novella, Florence, Italy, is the example of Renaissance architecture. Palais Garanir, Paris, Firenze, is the example of Renaissance architecture. Palazzo Farnese, Rome, Italy, is the example of Renaissance architecture. Pont Alexandre III, Paris, France, is known as architecture of Renaissance. National Palace, Buenos Aires, Argentina, is also an example of Renaissance architecture. Then Piazza del Campidoglio in Italy. It is the first plaza that was designed in Renaissance period and this is also symbolic to the Renaissance architecture. Then there is a concept of revivalism in architecture. What is revivalism? Revivalism in architecture is the use of visual styles that consciously echo the style of previous architectural era. Reviving earlier architectural forms in current architecture, modern day revival styles can be summarized within the new classical architecture. The revivalism is basically a movement which have happened in the world where people do not create something new but use the elements of the previous architecture of previous civilizations and repeated them to evolve into new building style that is known as a revivalism in architecture. Here you can see the typical historical house of Germany which have the elements which are not modern but old. Similarly, the TC Energy Center in Houston, Texas, USA, you find that the overall building form is of classical style. And similarly, you have Shimir Marathon Symphony Center in Nashville, where you can find this classical pediment and the columns and beams, which was developed and designed by the Greeks and Romans. In same, you can see the Herald Washington Library, where you find the pediment in blue color and red color arches and arcades and use of glass. Then comes early modern age and industrial revolution of 13, 17 to 18 centuries. With industrial revolution and emerging knowledge in scientific fields, the rise of new materials and technology Architecture and engineering began to separate and the architect began to concentrate on aesthetics and the humanist aspects of building design and engineer focused on tactical aspects of structure design. The industrial revolution was the transition to new manufacturing processes in Europe and United States in the period from 1760 to 1820 or 1840. Engineering is the use of scientific principles to design and build machines, structures and other items including bridges, tunnels, roads, vehicles and buildings. Whereas aesthetics or aesthetics is a branch of philosophy that deals with nature of beauty and taste as well as the philosophy of art, it examines subjective and sensory emotional values or sometimes called judgments of sentiment and taste. Beauty is the ascription of a property or characteristics to an animal, idea, object, person or place that provides a perceptual experience of pleasure or satisfaction. Beauty is studied as part of aesthetics, culture, social psychology, and <coughs> sorry, sociology. Why aesthetics emerge that have separated the engineering and architecture? Meanwhile, the industrial revolution laid upon the open the door for mass production and consumption 
the aesthetics become a criterion for the middle class as ornamented products ornamented products once expensive craftsmanship became cheaper under machine production modernism and modern movement modernism referred to a global movement in society and culture that from the early decades of the 20th century sought a new alignment with the experience and values of modern industrial life modernism emerged in 19th century and in 20th century the modern movement reflected a desire for the creation of new forms of art religion philosophy and social organization which reflected the newly emerging industrial world with urbanization new technologies and World War One and World War Two. Modernism is both a philosophical movement and an art movement that arose from broad transformations in Western society during the late 19th and early 20th century. The approach of modern architects was to reduce building to pure forms, removing historical references and ornamentation. in favor of functional details a building requires buildings displayed their functional and structural elements exposing steel beams and concrete surfaces instead of hiding them behind the decorative forms as the greeks and romans have developed different decorative forms of building elements there are four modern concepts and theories or architectural design philosophies that we must understand first is form follows the function the form follows function is a principle coined by louis sullivan the architect of skyscraper it is associated with the late 19th and early 20th century architecture and industrial design in general and it means the shape of a building or object should primarily relate to its intended function or purpose so that is form follow function so when architects used to design they follow this principle function follows the form the people or architects with creativity in architecture argues that form is independent from function and function can be fit into the built form if creative space is designed then it is very easy to fit in the functions in the building so it's not necessary that the form should follow the function but function can follow the form less is more this is again a modern philosophy the concept of less is more is coined by architect mies van der rohe which argued that a minimalist approach to architectural design should be applied with pure form of building pure material exposure with clear lines and shape geometry of the building then there is another concept of architectural design is less is more the concept of less is more is coined by architect robert venturi by promoting decorations in the building you can further understand it through from visual example which i have explained in the later slides modern architecture modern architecture or modernist architecture was based upon new and innovative technologies of construction particularly the use of glass steel and reinforced concrete the idea that form should follow function or functionalism and embrace of minimalism and a rejection of ornament all this is known as modern architecture these are the principles of modern architecture this is the bahaus school building in the south germany where you find there is no decorative columns or classical orders 
there is simple straight lines simple white and light colors that is the use of modern building here you find the cathedral of the brasilia in brazil where you find that the simple geometry is made this is guggenheim museum in new york again you can see the facade if you look at the building it is very pure form circular form is used concrete material is used and it is exposed in small scale building to modern architecture this is bellis tower chicago another example of modern architecture you can find that very simple uh, glass square or you can say steel square are made in the building and building have the clear geometry of squarish or a rectilinear form similarly you find the le carbuzier's the villa square poissy france where you find that simple simple straight white color uh, rectangle form is used in building and there are very you can say good columns and you can see the chicago skyline the sydney opera the falling water the unity temple the centennial hall all are the example of modern architecture with simple line functional buildings minimalist approach without any ornamentation post modern architecture post modern architecture is a style or a movement which emerged in 1960s as a reaction against the austerity formality and lack of variety of modern architecture particularly in the international style the movement introduced by dennis scott brown and robert venturi in their book learning from las vegas this is the example of post modern architecture you can see a variety in the building form this is dancing house in parag in czech republic this is petronas tower in kuala lumpur it's again example of post modern architecture this is ppd palace in pittsburgh again a post modern design this is glass house pavilion again a post modern design this is norton beach house again post modern design and this is guggenheim bilbao museum in spain again post modern design architecture of today since the 1980s as the complexity of building began to increase in terms of structural systems services energy and technologies the field of architecture became multidisciplinary with a specialization for each project type technological expertise or project delivery method moreover there has been an increase separation of the design architect from the project architect who ensured that the project meets the required standards and deal with its matter of liability the preparatory process for design of large buildings become complicated and required preliminary studies of durability sustainability quality money and compliance with local laws these are the reasons which basically give birth to today's architecture a large structure can no longer be the design of one person but must be the work of many successful architecture or engineering is not a personal philosophical or aesthetic pursuit by individualists rather it has to consider everyday needs of people and use of technology to create livable environments with design process based on studies of behavior environment and social sciences environmental sustainability become mainstream issue with a profound effect on the architectural profession many developers who support the financing of the building become educated to encourage the facilitation of environmentally sustainable design rather than solutions based primarily on immediate cost so the issue of current time is environment 
and environmental control systems within buildings. Major examples of this can be found in passive solar building design, the greener roof designs, biodegradable materials, and more attention paid to a structure's energy use. This major shift in architecture and engineering changed the professional education to focus more on the environment. So architecture of today is the expression of environmental assessment, understanding, and its application in the building space design. This is the example of architecture of today, the Beijing National Stadium in China, which is made with the concept as bird's nest. This is the resort world Sentosa, where you can find the architecture is very much related to the environment. The greenery is very much evident. The use of nature is quite evident in the example. Then there is this London City Hall, England, which is a glass uh, marble of the glass and concrete and uh, steel. And these kind of structures are the uh, emerging structures in current times. The glass curtain walls, which were the hallmarks of ultra modern urban life in many countries, surface even in developing countries like Nigeria, where international style has been represented since the mid 20th century, mostly because of the learning, leaning of the foreign trained architects and they do follow the architecture of the West. This is the architecture of Nigeria, where you can find the use of glass and steel in the buildings. There's an example of church building in Nigeria, the National Assembly in Nigeria, and you can say there's a sequence of buildings which are uh, modern building and uh, not traditional or classical or the uh, buildings that represent the local culture of the Nigeria, but it is the most modern, current, contemporary style of architecture. Now, finally, I have to explain that no work is done by one person alone. All work that is done is always there are always people behind every work for example if we are walking and talking today it is not only us who are responsible of walking and talking but it is our family who taught us how to talk and how to walk similarly an architectural work a research work or a lecture cannot be prepared without the support of the books and the other people's written material so in this lecture i have used different references for the concepts and terminologies. For example, the first book that I referred is Jeffrey Broadbent's book, Design and Architecture, Architecture and the Human Sciences. Second book is Charles Strunk's book, Structure as Architecture, a fourth book for architects and uh, structural engineers. Dickerson and Mavris's book, Architecture and Principle of System Engineering. McDonald's book, Structure and Architecture, March and Friedman's book, The Geometry of Environment and Introduction to Spatial Organization in Design, Rutledge have published this book, and Olson's and McNamara's book, Collaboration, Architecture and Engineering. These are the reference books which I, should, I am recommending the students to look and study from it and try to understand the subject of architecture for engineering. Thank you very much.